Hello everyone. Today is October 13th, 2021. My name is Tatiana Zaitseva. I'm here at Natural Pigments and I'm assisted, assisted like always by George O'Hanlon. And uh, today we will talk about probably the most important topic, most important after um, surfaces, of course. Surfaces is the, uh, if whoever already listened our lessons or uh, had our workshops understanding um, your supports is the probably the most important part but today we will talk about lead white before we talk about this i wanted um kind of address what happened uh, this week in our office and uh, so not often but once in a while we have uh, email from a customer and um this particular one was about painting best practices workshop and the uh, customer wrote um, I would love to learn about um, uh, saying techniques and um, uh, historical um, he put something like uh, historical appliance of the uh, painting but $450 it's too much and um, if you would reduce the, the cost to $100 maybe maybe I will consider to uh, take your course. I didn't answer to this customer because I was too upset and I, I thought I will not be nasty on the email, but today I thought I will address that to this customer specifically and for maybe for people who want to know about Painting Best Practices workshop. So uh, that workshop was um, done seven and a half years um, right before uh, corona george and i we were going all over the world and uh, different countries and we were given three uh, days workshop workshop was full of information we cover everything from um, supports to grounds to pigments to mediums varnishes brushes and studio safety all of that none of the your schools are covering and we do understand that it is important for you to take a classes from uh, your pair um, artist and whom you admire and because you do need to learn from them take their skills educate their education and um, their talent and to see how that will work for you and for me, interesting, then you are willing to pay, you know, for classes between 300 to $600 uh, for three days. And here you are. Uh, this is this is information what none of the schools and not many artists can give you. You question uh, the, uh, the cost of that, um, that information. And I can tell you this. Um, so seven years we had this class, people were overwhelmed with information and uh, finally Corona put this to an end where we put finally to, uh, to internet and so where you can for $450 have a 36 hours of your time and you can learn as long as you want and if you will divide that, that time to hours, uh, that money to hours, it will be Actually, it will cost the per hour. Uh, per hour, it will be twelve fifty, which basically minimum average um, salary this time in the country. So, this is my answer to that uh, to that customer and uh, to people who want to know about this uh, painting best practices. Now we have website, and uh, we committed to you. After class, we do have a group, uh, like every uh, last Saturday of the, the month we meet each other and so and then you can ask any questions what you developed uh, through the last uh, session of your uh, study or if you already uh, was with us in any classes at any point at uh, eight years please go back to us come back and ask questions we always george and i on last saturdays of the month we um uh, we meet you at uh, 11 o'clock uh, pacific time 
another bad news so i uh i know we uh first announced the live class in um in october in uh, october end of the october beginning of the november we forced to uh, actually do not have this class because due to a very busy time for george he's very busy and, uh, and unfortunately we can't take that time this uh, this time uh, for the class uh, live class so what we will do we probably will push it to uh, to january so i know some of you were will be disappointed and uh, i apologize for that it's just hectic happening right now in our company because another thing i need to apologize to you last month we were too enthusiastic about lead white coming to our uh, office and uh, we were promised to have that batch of pigment in our, web, in our um, facility by by beginning of september and it's pushed to october i won't immediately tell you so don't worry yesterday lead arrived to our company and today um, our production guys already started the first batch of the our regular lead white number one and two it will take um probably another week and we can half before we release to you so but since you are here today you are first to know about this and that's why you, you saw i pushed that first in september 22nd then october 14th then uh yesterday i completely took out the time but it's for sure for sure lead is now in the factory and um Oh, the good time, the good part of this, we probably will not probably we will end it up with lead white number three, and that is the one what I was talking on September, and so it does have bigger particles. It does not behave how we would want to put in the tube. Uh, it would be perfect to make your own paint, but it's absolutely you know since we don't put any additives. So it's very difficult time for us to, to process. But once we figure out um, the formula or how to, to work with that lead, we definitely uh, will release to you and we will explain what is the lead white number three. Um, every color on our palette, uh, on Rublev palette, took at, uh, at least a year and year and a half to learn how to, to, um, how to deal with one of or another. It's why Rublev uh, colors didn't go to uh, big uh, stores and we still don't. We are still going from with big, uh, small independent stores but that's because we, we needed to learn character or every color and so this lead is uh, quite the new one. Lead white number three is quite different. It will take time for us to understand, but once we will know, learn, we uh, we we would know the the flow. So uh, let's talk today about lead white, and um, so it's very exciting f uh, topic for us and um, for some of you too. And I know uh, people who absolutely can stay the lead white and upset with us about promoting that. So for these people, uh, I don't want to uh, to read your comments. And so please, if you don't like lead white, just leave right now and we will be peacefully <laughs> going different ways. Because in uh, the truth is, you don't need to use lead white if you don't want. But uh, we do explain already so many times um, did explain how it's important and we will talk today george will help me today to explain again and um like always we will show you small uh rolling and so the the video will be we will explain what we are showing you please ask the questions and uh, after that i will show you again swatches uh how the lead white will look with different colors and we will cover today again yellowing because we felt like um, it was not enough emphasis on last time. Let's go.
Plate number one is basic lead carbonate and uh, we ground that in linseed oil. Uh, from all our lead whites, based on our <laughs> last uh, events videos, uh, I would say that this probably the stiffest one what we sell every day that's what meaning so uh, i will show you stock lead it was a little bit different but stock lead is was not every day in our um in our sale so but lead white you can see how pay attention how strong peaks are standing as when you tap the palette knife Just a reminder, lead white number one is ground in linseed, linseed oil. oil. Lead, white, uh, lead white number two ground in walnut oil. And immediately you will see the difference in behavior. Long time. Um, lead white number two and flemish white were the longest colors on uh, on our palette these days if you saw our uh, session on september i showed you mixing white is uh, longer and today you will see we will have another one color very interesting and you can see uh, uh, that would be lit upon so that would be the long one you can see how lead white number two in walnut oil more fluffy and more stringy in fact when you will paint with brush you will have the uh, thin needle or how is that so to say george needles going or threads going uh between uh, your brush in palette. Don't be scared, don't be alarmed. This is normal. This is what lead white number two does. Stuck flake white. We were proud to announce that uh, on September 30th, we finally had stuck lead. After almost two years, we didn't have. And what I'm showing you here, you see how difficult for me was take out to squeeze that color from the tube. That was batch one before. That is the batch of uh, 2019. And uh, you can see uh, see how, how tacky and uh, stiff, but it's immediately giving long strings. More you play with that, more it's melting. And about stock lead, we, uh, we, you probably will have more questions about, and so we definitely will explain to you more uh, during the, when we will show the swatches. It is very unusual color. It's very expensive. And you can see how it started melting. Here almost impossible to see uh, then this color looks actually like dingy white. It's not exactly the bright white what you um, experience with a lead white number one or two or even more visible will be with titanium white. But for now it's it still look very white. There any questions george about stock lead or we will answer later hillary asks uh, if she says uh, let me see here lead white seems to have a pinkish cast mm, uh, once in a while hillary it's possible so uh, it's batch to batch and as much as we say then uh interesting lead white <laughs> is um uh, you know synthetic pigment and it's supposedly be the same every time uh, when we produce and it's not that's how we had that uh, our dusty rose because it came batch completely pink you're right once in a while it happens so 
here's titanium white and you can see how it's even from the tube you will see how different behave very fluffy there are nobody at all and uh, again it's very unusual about our titanium we don't put any fillers which um, very unusual for titanium uh, for production of titanium because uh, all other companies are you put in fillers there because it's very powerful and it probably would be wise to put filler fillers like let's say barium sulfate chalk mica whatever you you have in your studio that would be good to uh, to add to tune down a little bit of this uh, powerful color but since we don't put any fillers or additives so we left as it is and it's um, in my mind it's not very interesting color but again it's very useful because it's the brightest brightest white lithophon and uh, this is 19th century color or 20th even century yes george basically yeah, yeah it was 19th developed century late style. 19th century but it really came into use on, on the artist palette in the 20th and you can see how um <laughs> how long that is of course um, uh, on uh, on september we were showing mixing white that that was doing almost the same but this one Litapon is very interesting again it's very uh, bright white color very transparent um, compared to titanium uh, yes very transparent again you see nobody it, it's leveling uh, out immediately and um, Again, if you don't want to paint with uh, lead white, that's your could be your choice. It doesn't. It's uh, it dries so long, it's unbelievable. So it it will stay open on your palette for a long time. Again, if you need to speed up the the drying time, uh, it, you need to mix with some kind of uh, another pigment. Barite, barite. Oh, here I will uh, point for you. So bright one of these pigments what giving this uh, I guess it's connection with oil and the uh, pigment itself to aluminum giving once in a while this residue um, it's it's not a rust George how to say it's the residue what what would be so it's grayish it's just, it's just a grayish uh, residue that gets yeah. onto the just on the around the nozzle so we we had uh, one customer who was upset with that and so we keep sending um uh, new uh, new tube and so she still keep finding some uh dark residue and until we figure out and this is what what she was talking about this is the um residue on the nozzle and we can't do anything because that's the reaction uh on the pigment itself uh with the oil and aluminum so uh for now we can go back okay we're back to here and uh, i would like to show you some uh swatches and to, uh, to you will try to i will try to compare to uh, how to mix with colors i want to warn you so because when i'm looking at camera and on my you know swatches it's a little bit shift color and um we were trying yesterday one way or another i will tell you if it's going warmer or cold, cooler okay let's uh, look at this camera george so um this our all our LED, uh, whites not lead whites because three of them not so here's lead white number one and you see it's slightly yellowish lead white number two because it uh it it's ground in walnut oil so it's slightly lighter here's our dusty rose our happy ox accident incident <laughs> so we don't usually produce that but once in a while again when the the um, color come too pinkish so that probably would be our future color too so here's stuck lead and you can see how dingy that color looks like compared to um, to 
other uh, whites and what i want to show you yesterday uh not yesterday um a week ago i closed that and i yesterday i opened the card and you can see here's little bat what's darkening here you can see here darkening a little bit yellowing and here's lighter uh shade nothing happened to lithopon it didn't change at all and so i i hope you can see even because okay here and uh, so that's how bright looks like and i want to to tell you this is not a color basically because bright in linseed oil looks completely transparent what dark you looking dark spot here it's uh, it's actually oil so when you mix your color uh, your bright with uh, um, with any color it will make just color a little bit more transparent and i will show you in in a second and so and here is titanium and um, you can see how glossy titanium titanium is and uh, so on some of them too it's developed the glass but titanium the most so you can see yes okay so let's see now how it mix with the color so again on uh, it's blue rich yellow ochre if you know how it look like our blue rich yellow ochre you know then it's not that orangey so it's uh, it's actually more greenish side but here's uh, uh, i at least i see on my screen as a more orangey color but what i wanted to show you so how it mix in with lead white number one number two and, and stock lead you basically don't you can't see the difference so again all the difference only on behavior of these colors but not on appearance here's the lithopon you see how uh, brighter that is so right right here and so bright that's what bright does to the color it makes that brighter and if you put uh, enough so it will be even uh, like more transparent think it's like this we have uh, we have a Velasquez medium and impasta medium uh, in our line of colors and um, both of them using um, we use uh, chalk and on impasta we use a little bit of bright oh thank you very much <laughs> so, so we use uh, bright and chalk and you know then uh, when you add Velasquez or impasta medium too much you can make that color uh, very transparent so bright essentially the same in fact on many companies bright does use uh, as used as a filler. as a filler so because it doesn't have its own color but it's bulk up the color and it's making uh, basically pigment uh, separate pigment particles separate from each other so let's go back to to titanium and you can see how immediately that shifted uh, the color so that's blue rich yellow ochre let's go to verona here's how verona looks alone here with lead white and again you can see almost no the difference between three colors here's lithopon and you see now you can see because verona is very transparent as it is and uh, so with bright it's even more transparent and you see how immediately bluish cast on uh, on the verona with titanium because titanium is very cool color cool uh, white compared to very warm lead here's our viridian that's how viridian looks like all very powerful color but very transparent and uh, again here's our three whites lit upon you see how with bright it's very transparent and completely blue right here it's very blue cast with with titanium here's our ultramarine and again the same Here's a little bit not visible, but Lithopon is uh, making uh, a little bit brighter. 
and uh, this with titanium. Here's our cobalt. Cobalt, very, uh, again, it's uh, uh, very powerful. It's a uh, uh, color and I, I can't even, we don't, uh, I, th I think it's only one, um, the a peg color among all our blue colors. We don't have many because again, it's every time single pigment and uh, we don't have uh, any King's Blue where we were company uh, forced to mix uh, four to five pigments. So it's always one pigment. Cobalt Blue is one pigment and you can see how it's looking with titanium. Here's lead white, here's titanium. And uh, here's cadmium. With cadmium, basically you can see any difference with lead or titanium cadmium is so powerful the only difference i can see i don't know if you see on your screen the only difference i can see on on barite and um that's um, um that's very important to understand then because when people buy barite they think then it's uh like um like off white color it is not it's completely transparent and um, sometimes people are upset because they think they buy the color and so we could do to put barite as a medium too but barium sulfate is the pigment as same as of course calcium carbonate as a chalk but uh, we thought that would be logical to put uh, barite as a pigment instead of putting as a medium. So, but uh, again, bright you can put even uh, on top of your color. So if like, if you need to tune down a little bit, remember then, uh, remember then wh wh what we were showing then, um, oil will be uh, staying on top. So just be careful with that color. Now I would like to show you. So is there any, uh, any Questions, George. There's lots of questions. Okay, do you let's want to start. deal with them now, or uh, we can, yeah, we can do now, and then we can show. Uh, is stuck with linseed oil. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, it's with linseed oil. Again, uh, working with museums and uh, restorers and scientists, we understand that the most sane <laughs> oil for the oil painting is the linseed oil. And um, again, if you want to know more why we specifically choose linseed oil, we do have um, we do have lessons on that, or you can read on our website. And um, if you, George, want to add something brief uh, about why linseed oil, linseed linseed oil is a faster dryer and it's more reactive with uh, certain colors like lead. And um, that was just a choice that we made. We thought it would be best especially with the stack process. We do have uh, we do have a couple colors uh, mixed with uh, walnut oil and uh, it was not the idea that to make the color brighter how people think then like you know other companies are making with safflower or poppy uh, or walnut whole line of walnut so it was not about <laughs> brightness of the color but it's about behavior because if you ever uh, mixing your own colors and you mix one with linseed oil another one with walnut you will see the difference in behavior uh, is titanium more transparent uh, without fillers no it's no, actually the it's opposite, opposite. Yeah. it's opposite so think it's fillers it is pigments, anyhow you look. So like titanium has a pigments and uh, uh, extender pigments have a, a pigments. So, but they are transparent. So imagine you put in titanium pigments and between them, you are spreading with uh, uh, transparent pigments. So that's how it spreads and it's actually much more transparent. We do suggest for you to, uh, to use fillers in that case. Uh, in our, when you buy our titanium, it will be very powerful and sometimes it's needed. So like we always say, that's why we come up with titanium, lead titanium for you. So then at least it's, it will mitigate of the all imperfections of titanium by lead. Um, but 
you can use bright you can use chalk so anything what is the ratio titanium lead and titanium uh, lead mix i do believe it's 50 50 but nope, nope. nope. okay nope. it's it's uh 30 percent because when we are giving we, you all our secrets. Yeah, we when you try to do anything 50-50, you really don't get the benefit of either pigment. Oh. So, so we did it 30% titanium and 70% uh, lead. So that's the lead titanium color. When I'm saying 50-50, obviously, because in uh, like, let's say, Cerus and um, Venetian, I'm just telling you so then it is there so obviously the the formulas are uh different so uh and it just for you to understand then we do mix that colors and so that was september um session since lithoporn is uh all so people are confused is, uh, with the zinc in lithopon so they some people oh, think it's zinc white no, that is uh, actually zinc. Um, uh, George, you, uh, that's, that's the same thing. Yes. So, the same question here. Okay. So, uh, lithopone is zinc sulfide, sulfide. and bar sulfide and barium sulfate. So it's a it's a double compound, and the zinc sulfide does not have the same reaction as zinc oxide. So just to let people know. This is one example of zinc that is safe. <laughs> it's many of them, but uh, one of on our line, uh, and we knew then that that question will pop up. It's why we always on everywhere when you read about lithopon, we spe specifically write then it's um, zinc sulfate. So then you absolutely understand that this is not zinc oxide, two different. Uh, chemicals. Do you want to go to swatches or? There's more questions. Have, okay. With ultramarine blue, does the lead white number one appear to make the uh, paint more transparent than it is on uh, its own? Um, no. No. no <laughs> it's uh, again, it's white. It's not uh, as much as we want to say, then it's um, uh, obviously a little bit uh, warmer than titanium but no it's not and uh, i can go back and uh, very quickly show you so uh it's um just you can oh you sorry uh-huh and we can do it yes so it's probably look looking like more transparent but no it, it is not so it's um it's just shifting the color or i you know i need to to learn the it's tinting the it's tinting, tinting. the color. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Tinting. So it's not it. Ultramarine blue is fairly transparent, but it's when you mix it with the white, obviously it's going to tint the color and it's going to make it more opaque at that point. And what I will show you when we will uh, let's since we are here right now. So let uh, let me uh, show a little bit of like last uh, week, uh, last month we were doing. So I will show you. This is Verona green. And that is with uh, lead white, number one, number two, number three, it's stuck, <laughs> stuck. So here's lithopon, titanium, and barite. So here's visible more. So you see how, you remember last week, uh, uh, last month we explained what does it mean that uh, black bar behind. So it's to see the transparency, like see how, how transparent here. So if you see that black bar under, so that means the color is transparent. You see how even transparent Verona become, uh, become more opaque with white and look how it shifted the color with titanium. It's become absolutely blue. Um, so here's uh, our Viridian. I will show you this. And again, you see, very transparent viridian and it become quite a peg on all of them and you see what titanium did to to viridian this is viridian with barite and uh, this is this is what we were talking right now uh, about 
ultramarine and here I wanted to show you very apparent here I will try to to see them you see how that is matte looking because that stock lead what I was using for video is uh, was with big particles you see how here is glossy and how matte here and here's your you see how what's the difference this is titanium and this is stuck so uh, again I'm my, I was mixing 50 50 and uh, you can see the difference and so you um, when you use colors and if you if you use the uh, big particles and we had the uh, big lesson about the particle size and the difference and so uh, you you will see the um, matte surface uh, compared to when you paint with smaller particles it's more oil there so it will look much more glossy so here's our cobalt oh here's pure color that I will not so here's lead white number two here's again stuck very very matte um, here's titanium okay and here's with uh, bright you see how this so this is full color and that is just making a little bit more transparent with bright but cobalt is uh, very and the transparency adds to the uh, depth of the color. Yes, that's true. So here's our uh, yellow ochre. Again, very matte. And you see what's the difference. Look at this. Again, 50-50 with color. And you can see the difference. And here's with barite. So, and of course on cadmium, you can, uh, um, cadmium red, you can see at all. So the different, they're all of them look the same. So that's, um, that's how I swatches. I will leave that uh, for now here. And so we have some more questions. Oh yes, let's do. <clears throat> this is a good question. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you not recommend uh, using stock for highlights because of the yellowness? It's actually opposite and um, it, uh, yellow, yellow, it's good then uh, it's kind of bridge to what we, we will talk next. So um, we do recommend stock lead on very top uh, layers. If you do need to boost the color, you can add a little bit of titanium. But what's interesting about um, stock lead, it's behavior. Because with stock lead, you can you can actually sculpt your sculpture your uh, brush strokes. That's what you know. It's so funny. We we travel a lot with our class, uh, our workshops we, uh, all over the world, and it's so interesting. We meet a lot of artists who who will admire the you know Rembrandt, the you know old masters let's say like that and they they come to museums and they're saying like oh you know look this brush strokes and uh, i i want to achieve that and then we are looking on their palette and they're paint, painting with thalos blue and you know and modern synthetic small particle colors and they are like expecting somehow to make the same brush strokes it's impossible due to the physics of that pigments so we are giving you that specific color with bigger particles because it's behavior and how you can make that strokes that's why actually opposite we are telling you due to the price of the color that probably as, as unless you're just very rich person so it would not be the you know the wise uh, to use that on on the very bottom use just simple lead white which is less expensive and what, uh, use uh, leave your stock lead for the very 
top or very important strokes where you, you need that. Yes, George. And, and one other thing too, you have to keep in mind that as an artist, you're in control of all the values in a picture. You can take the dingiest white and make it as bright as the sun simply by surrounding it with a series of different values, values that are darker. So it's all relative within the four corners of your painting. The values are relative and you have total control over that. And what Tanya said about the control that the stack process gives you is really unbelievable. You should ask uh, Virgil um, uh, Elliot. So he he loves that color and he will explain to you everything about yellowness on uh, uh, his, uh, his language. <laughs> so, but yes, it's true. So here's another uh, question. Another one. What is the main <clears throat> difference between uh, Bright and Velasquez? Uh, just handling properties? Yes handling properties and it's a little bit different because in barite we are just simply using barite and um, on um, on Velasquez we are using uh, uh, several uh, pigments like it's uh, it's chalk actually the most and I, I don't uh, remember exactly George what other pigment you use but the most important what we did there we used bodied oil so it's why Velasquez not only giving you bulk <coughs> and uh, but the long uh, strokes too so that's that's the difference between velasquez and uh, let's say bright is uh in, and in impasta in impasta is everything very short short and mm -hmm. bulky and like you know so but um yeah that's the main difference are there any consideration to take when using walnut oil and lizard on base paint paints together um not really. No, absolutely. So just keep this, in mind that the walnut oil, anything with longer. walnut oil is going to dry slower. So that's the, yeah. That's the main thing. So um, again, remember you can mix any oils. If you like walnut oil, yes. If you like poppy oil, we don't suggest to use that. And if if you ask why, so uh, we can answer next time. And uh, same with safflower oil. They, they can go all together. The difference uh, comes when, when it's drying time and you will surprise like why one part is drying longer and another already dried and that's where the sinking in happening uh, often. So, but this is, uh, keep in mind, but you can mix any oils. Please celebrate a little more about the what ways walnut oil versus linseed uh, oil changes behavior and pigment. You want okay. me to address that? Yes, you can do that. Okay. So basically, oil and pigments react with one another. So, and because obviously pigments are chemicals and they, unlike with other mediums, they're, they're very reactive with the medium. And as a result, uh, linseed oil tends to be, uh, especially with reactive pigments, tends to react more than does walnut oil. So, and, and you get different things like, uh, you, get, uh, you get different drying times, you get um, you get different rheologies or, or behavior of the paint, so a lot of different things like that, and and that's why as a paint maker we may make choices uh, between one oil or another. Other percentages of titanium dioxide and lead titanium were uh, by weight or by volume. Actually, it's it's um it is by weight because uh, I think it's like the. Um, <coughs> Our titanium tube, that's again how you will notice between other company and us, when you take our titanium, it's very heavy. And so when you, con uh, you know, you put uh, two, two, two together, lead white and uh, titanium, they almost identical in weight. Is there um, sulfur content in ultramarine blue mechanism? It not uh, compatible with lead white. Okay, George, um, speak in. So the, the sulfur English. content in ultramarine is very small, and uh, besides, not all sulfur compounds in pigments react with or incompatible with lead white. So you have to clarify that. Uh, and usually, it was a long time it's, ago. <laughs> it's usually due to impurities rather than the actual pigment. 
So, and it's, uh, it was uh, common more in beginning of uh, uh, 20th century and 19th century, but not anymore. So, because these days, um, you know, industry is uh, uh, doing very well, which we will talk about a little bit about industry. This is the lead white, lead in the lead titanium, our um, coolness and turn the somewhat to uh, warm side. Um, George, can you? You have something for that? Yes. Basically, it it does cut the coolness of titanium. It also reduces its opacity because 100% titanium oh, is, right is very yes. opaque. Can you, can you please put, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so we are here and here's you have You have that lead titanium mix yes. right there, yeah. Yeah, so you see that uh, it is uh, it, it is it a is, little bit warmer. Yes, yeah. it is a little bit warmer. But again, I would always com compare it to to lead instead of to titanium. So uh, to lead, it does make cooler. So that's why I'm saying. So you see how warm lead and uh, how cooler is lead titanium. So that's the difference. Okay. okay. The ultramarine blue in the lead white number one looks more transparent than in the other leads. Is there just uh, my screen? Yes. Yes. It's they uh, absolutely you can. If I will cover, you will not recognize what lead white number one or stock. They they three of them almost identical. So it's not more uh, no. transparent. No. So they're they're roughly the same. Yeah. It's just probably screen. In the glazing, what extenders could be used uh, to, to make ultramarine bl blue more transparent? Just about any. Bright. Bright would be already one. we made for you already. So you can do it. If you uh <laughs> we just made a new batch of ultramarine in our uh, on our uh, factory and it's uh we decided to make documentary from day one to uh, to the very last grinding, and uh, this time because we are making a little bit bigger batches now than we did before, so it took for us two days to put pigment to oil. Ultramarine is one of the weirdest uh, pigments. What doesn't like the oil? It's repel the oil. It's actually like w likes water more than oil. So it's always re repel the oil. And so like for certain amount of oil, we need to put certain amount, uh, amount of the pigment. So first day we, we did, we put um, less than one third of the pigment and we could not start machine because it was so, you know, um, stiff. So uh, five hours later we come, it was relaxed. It was absolutely puddle of the oil. There you know, blue oil. So we added another one third and we left for overnight because it, the machine was tired. So because it was uh, even hot uh, motors on that. So we come morning and it's again was puddle of the, uh, of the uh, oil. So we added last third and just by the end of the second, um, uh, second day, finally, finally, it was the right consistency. So, um, Again, in our company, just because we don't put any additives, so the our ultramarine will behave completely different. So, but it's long as it is, but to make that transparent, so it's depend what you add. So if you will add, let's say, um, impasta medium, so it will make transparent, but it still will be kind of like um, fluffy. With Velasquez medium, it will be uh, more tacky, like longer. And uh, and of course, with Berite, it's just, uh, you saw it will be uh, much more transparent. Does this is a good question. Does particle size uh, of pigment trans, uh, transparent to opacity? Size? Translate to opacity. Translate, I'm sorry. Translate to opacity. Yes, absolutely. So what that means Absolutely. is what that means is smaller the pigment, the more op uh, more opaque the paint will be. I think it's like this. So if smaller particles, 
just just think about uh, physics. So smaller particles, they, they can connect to each other very, uh, very good. Bigger particles, because usually bigger particles means they are an uneven particles. And so they can't clump together. So then that's how they stay. And so that's, that, that's why you can see the light uh, penetrated through. So it's why with bigger particles, it's much more transparent. Great uh, question. This one's <clears throat> not necessarily related. Uh, they're asking about egg tempera. Can you put yes. a layer of egg tempera in between two layers of oil? Uh, we know then it was done. It was but done mostly at either at the bottom of the painting or, or at the, the top. top. But whether you can do that in between, that's... Why, why would be the reason? So here's again, you need to, uh, to kind of like to, to think about reason why. So like uh, in case of you will put a, uh, a temper on, on the bottom. So usually it's to give the, the value and uh, to dry that fast. And so that would be, but again, that means you would need uh, to use different surface because you know, in order to paint uh, an egg tempera, you need to have a porous uh, surface. But if you paint uh, again about on top of the oil, so that just to prevent certain colors to uh, go to to shift the color for example for uh, azurite uh, this is blue color but through the uh, time because of the oil uh, going on top so it become green so in order to prevent that color to change so you can use the tempera but um, we probably you can call us back if you want so because we need to know why would be the reason she explains that, oh. or he, I, I, uh, Monday, explains egg temper for small details. Uh, but, you know, overall, the, pr the problem you're going to have is because when you apply egg tempera um, on top of oil, and if you're trying to do small details, you may get some beating up. And most of the time, what we've seen in history is that the egg tempera was applied as a final layer, as Tanya mentioned, to preserve the color. So there, that particular was, was an important aspect of that. Um, there's a good question here. Mm -hmm. I think we need to, it's, it's about mixing different oils. I, I can't see very well in this glasses. Well, can I'll, you I'll read, read it off. It mm -hmm. says, uh, uh, just to clarify, you can mix the different oils like a combo of linseed and walnut, or if you add linseed a poppy oil what will strengthen it uh so forth so better to note we always say then uh the simpler your painting is better on the end but we do understand then once in a while you need something very different and so like if you think then your blue or your white will stay better in walnut oil because walnut oil it's it's true uh it's a little bit uh, lighter in color yes then on the very top uh, layer you can use walnut oil it's nothing about in between the oils it's uh it's about the uh you're preventing the yellowness or darkness now uh, on the end about poppy same um, again chemically there are no problem to mix together the problem comes because some of the oils are not drying uh, the same way as the linseed oil that's why we choose the most for our most of our colors to, to paint with uh, to make this with uh, linseed oil because it's the most stable oil. So we do know the instances where in uh, five years after painting, um, and I, I do believe it's already open information about Schmenke, uh, artist in Europe was uh, using the Schmenke and so uh, he was doing very big impasta painting. It was, um, it was sold and five years later it started just leaking. And like, it was completely dry five years before but five years later it's liquefied and uh, so we don't know what other other oils can do I mean now we know 
But stay with linseed oil. The most chemically, again, if you paint very thinly, you can paint with anything, like any, any of these oils. I think the main thing that people have to, you need to ask yourself why. What, what's the function of mixing oils? Uh, and you know, when you think about it- Probably, you know what George, uh, you, you, when you were starting to say why, because, uh, because again, I think because uh, people now, artists now using different oils from different companies. And what, what if you different like- Different oil uh, or oil colors? Oil, oil colors yeah. what have uh, different oils. So it did, it really doesn't make so if you if you want the benefit of a paler colored oil such as walnut or safflower or poppy oil, don't use it at the bottom of the paint, uh, you know, the, on the underpainting or in the bottom layers. Doesn't make any sense. Where you use that would be maybe in the top layer of the painting. Yes. And, and so and plus it's drying slower. What you know, there's there's really no purpose in doing that. So I think that's that's really as you said, keep it simple is usually the best. Yeah. Here's a good question from Herb. Uh, did, did, can you what, read, uh, what would be the amount of pigment you need to make a tube of stack from the pigment? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Herb, hello. Um, we miss you. Uh, usually we are in New York on this time of the year and see you, but okay. So, let's put this way. So we sell pigment on 50 grams of jar. And um, when we made our new batch, and batches actually before too, so but we, we didn't realize them this time, the tube of the color stock lab, the latest batch, what I will tell you, the batch is 10126. So the tube weight 200 grams for, for americans who don't know what the grams are and how much it is it will be half of your pound half pound and one two so 200 grams and uh, this time lead white was so dense we used only eight percent of the oil usually it it's coming so then here's your uh, your idea so then how much pigment per or uh, how much oil per pigment you use usually it's 10 percent for lead white for mother lake it will be 110 percent but for lead white it's 10 percent this time we used only eight percent of the oil so from your 50 grams of the jar you will make one fourth of that tube we didn't, I mean, we increased a little bit of the price of the tube, but we felt not well to add, to make that worth it, what we, we understand and how much the pigment costs. And so that's why I, uh, friends who called me, I always saying you buy the tube, uh, the pigment you can buy only for the, purpose of to learn how to do this, to understand the property of the pigment, but uh, it is much more economical to buy the tube. Uh, again, it was our conscious decision because um, yes, company is losing money on, on that pigment, but you know, uh, George did uh, ma many more crazy uh, things than that one. So that we are custom already here in, the, in, um, in our company. Talking about our company, oh, oops. I have another oops. one, just, okay. is that okay? <clears throat> titanium white becomes amber, or does titanium white become amber by adding calcium carbonate? What type of charge, or I'm not sure if that's, uh, do you put on it to make it equal white? Not sure I fully understand that question, but. Uh, so uh, I, I think the idea is coming, so then uh, the, would uh, calcium carbonate, it will make a little bit more transparent. I don't think it will make yellow more because if we, I will show you next um, uh, our 
uh, yellowing uh, charts, which we didn't do uh, titanium yet because I, I just didn't have the time. And what uh, swatches you will see today, it's from 2013 when we did have time. And um, so, but you can read on uh, Golden website about titanium because that's what they do. So they, they uh, titanium was long time on their uh, palette. And so they do have article. If, uh, if you will not find it uh, after that program, I will put in, uh, in content here on, on you know, on, um, on message board, I will put that article. You can read about titanium. It, it's yellow as much as uh, any other whites. Uh, maybe not as much as, uh, I mean, maybe not like zinc. Zinc is one pigment, but not yellow in as much as all other. But titanium uh, uh, yellow in as much as every uh, everything else. And I don't think that, uh, you know, chalk will make that that difference. I again, I may be wrong. Uh, just for that reason, just because you had that question, when I will make a swatches for titanium next time, I will definitely um, uh, investigate that one too. Another question: I'm interested in unusual textures possible with somewhat dilettante paint, handmade. Do you have any of your whites have a tendency towards dil dilettancy? The latency, excuse me. Uh, not the answer, among, is, the answer no, is no. No, not among the lead whites or not there among is, the lead. In fact, I don't think there's any white that uh, has a rheopectic type behavior. No, no, but uh, I can tell you this. Some umbers do. Uh, our umbers are. Some, it's, not uh, all. No, yeah. Because uh, we actually don't usually don't like that behavior because it's pain on the neck and um, so it's why George mitigating that in umbers he's uh, he's putting uh, high viscosity uh, linseed oil on you know on certain proportions uh, but we uh, I can tell you this so we we will have it's uh, it's ready to tube right now we will have somebody asked another question about orpiment we will have four pigment that is dilettante. That's for sure. So that one and uh, our lazurite is dilettante. That's that's the bad one. So that's the lazurite. And so I, I'm, I'm happy then we have these questions that finally artists started ask questions about behavior because it was not exist before. George O'Hanlon started to talk about this 15 years ago. Finally, we, we have it and we love to talk about this. And um, on the end, probably, George, we, uh, we can put that on the website uh, to, to explain certain our colors. Before we go further, I want uh, to talk because I know we will we probably have more questions. And so I still want to go to talk about yellowing. But before that, since we are uh, talking about that s serious subject. Um, George and I, this week, we are going coding sim symposium, uh, which uh, we are going every other year. We go into huge industry, big companies. They, uh, they have symposium in Las Vegas and one in, I believe in Chicago, uh, one year in Chicago, one year in uh, Las Vegas. And, um, where the latest scientific discoveries coming to um, to uh, big industries it's not most cases it's not for us but uh, George decided then we absolutely need to know what's going on in the world because what happened to our pigments I told you last session on September then we lost couple pigments it's painful uh, for us, and uh, it's uh, it's pain for us to tell you about this. For example, the uh, the latest one we we are losing. We have just last batch left. It's uh, chromium uh, chrome primrose, and um, because nobody is interested to make that color, because you know it's lead color, and uh, so. George helped me what how how do I explain why is that happening? And on top of that, 
the small companies that are gobbled up by big companies. We this year alone, uh, we switched three different. I mean, we didn't switch the companies changed so from small companies be, uh, become big companies and so uh nowadays that's why we are canceling certain our events because george is spending now more time to look for pigments and uh, to find right um right pigments for us and it's unfortunately becoming walmart of the um, paint industry so it's it's horrible and that's why uh, George bought more equipment this year. So then we will start to make our pigments. But before uh, before that will happen, uh, we re we still rely on uh, on other people, and that's why we are going uh, to coding symposium just to understand what a heck is going on. And so, do you need do you have anything to add? No, so we're, in terms of uh, pigments, this is a common occurrence in the industry and it has occurred throughout history. As an example, Egyptian blue disappeared in the Renaissance, during the Renaissance, didn't even know it existed for centuries and it was, in a sense, rediscovered uh, and it had been around for thousands of years before then. So these things happen, uh, genuine Naples yellow disappeared Genuine um, lead tin. Uh, lead tin yellow disappeared. And, and it's because... And now it's chromes disappearing. You know, <laughs> it, it's because uh, the, the pigment industry is not supported by artists, but by all the other uses, you know, such as consumer products. And, and uh, the one thing that we fear is that inorganic pigments are going to go the way of the dinosaurs because... Uh, because they, they all have metals in them. And, uh, and if that happens, then we're going to have uh, basically uh, a very small or s good selection of pigments to work with. So we're hoping that, that you know, all of these things, uh, the inorganic pigments continue to, to be uh, uh, supported by industry. But we'll see as time goes on. And here's, uh, here's comes to prosaic thing coming so it's of course the prices and uh, we didn't change our prices six years so before that we and again we changed only once six years ago and it was just uh, two percent uh, on certain colors not in all, all. Um, what we decided this year we will not uh, change the prices across offline that will not happen because some colors we uh, we definitely want to keep even if it's you know crazy price like stock lead and uh, um, but certain prices we will change and so you need to understand then then it's uh, it's nothing about us wanting so suddenly to to change something in our company uh, it's the reality and uh, in fact then like this lead white was supposed to come uh, to us in September uh, was delivered yesterday because they it's nothing even about like what you know um, the boats are standing outside the San Francisco port it's the it's the company here in California just traveling from one place to another which is three hours so you know uh, before us but it, it took uh that long and so everything is changing and um so when when companies sell you professional paint for three dollars 98 cents you i think you need to start think what you buy in, in the tube so because uh, it, it's something wrong with, uh, with, with that uh, concept. So, and again, we, we will do our best. George, can you change please now for yellow? And we need to talk about yellow. And, uh, last, uh, last, uh, months we, uh, we just check about yellow. And if you want to see what we were talking about, go to September part. But what we didn't mention, I want to emphasize, when you have your painting in, um, in room of light and suddenly you change to the dark, uh, dark room, 
it's yellowing. It yellow, it could yellow that bad. I will show you in the second. So, but the moment you pull out to just normal uh, light, you don't need to put on the, uh, the window. You just can leave on uh, light and it will uh, go back to your white color over a period 24 to 48 hours. It will be a regional color unless you paint with, with something very wrong. But uh, what we were going back and forth before, like months before we, we had that in September and now today, so it's another month exactly. And I can tell you that the yellowing part is going much slower than will go back to white. It's much faster. And like I said, it's uh, 24 to 48 hours. It will be original. So let's, uh, let's look on that camera, George, and then we will return back to, to questions. So uh, and let's what, emphasize here what we're talking about. We're talking yes. about darkness yellowing. Yes. So when the paint or yes. a dried oil painting is held in the dark, all colors, not just white, yes. tends to, but it's most noticeable, obviously, in white, yes. tend to become yellow. Yes. Thank you. So here's a, I will show you. This is two uh, lead whites. And uh, so you can see the difference. So this is three mil and this is six mil uh, 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 swatch. Same lead white. And uh, again, uh, I will show you it's 2013. We, we made that swatches right before uh, our first class we, we had. And you can see how yellowed. So this is uh, uh, two months yellowing. And this is uh, how uh, I just opened uh, like a couple days ago again and so and you can see here too so you see the difference between white and uh, and yellow part so here's uh, lead white number two and um, so thicker uh, more more pigment it is obviously it's a uh, less uh, less oil so then this is uh, this is what uh, yellow in here in this part and this is lead white number two this is barite and again what do you see here you see here the uh, the uh, yellow it's oil because the Barite is so transparent. Look, look just just to compare. You see how transparency you can see. So then, uh, barite is very transparent. Don't be disencouraged with that that color, um, with with that uh, picture because of that uh, yellowness. Again, you don't usually. I I encourage you do not use barite as a white color. So. This is almost like extender, but you can see, I wanted to show you what lead white does to, to bone black. This is just a bone black with, uh, with um, um, this is with the, what, the, 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 the lead white and here with, um, with barite. You can see the difference, how it's boosting the color. So, and, um, don't pay attention to this because this is my uh, my guys, <laughs> but it's stock lead. But I wanted to show you, this is uh, stock lead from different um, um, stocks, and so you can see then it's how um, yellow in here and dingy color here. It's again, it's all in the, uh, about particle size. That's how you know if particle size are much bigger so it's look different and it, uh, it's appears different and um, so uh, Josh you can uh, put me back we I I promise you last time to talk about um, what's that um, replacement I, I decided to not show you because um, um, and uh, it's ethical uh, part of uh, so if you if you are interested uh, to to know uh, if you if you want to know about the difference about the replacement you can do swatches on your own of your replacement replacement lead flake white, white. Yes. what some companies call flake white replacement yeah so 
look on that, um, uh, make your own and, uh, and write us, uh, show us pictures, what, uh, what you think. Um, and, uh, it will be interesting. So, um, more questions. How does uh, lapis compare to azurite for particle size and the latency? So both of them will be the latent and uh, uh, both of that we do have both of them in. Uh, so lazurite we still have in stock. Azurite is coming. The particle the size particle of azurite size is, is much huge. bigger. Much azurite bigger. is huge. It, so. it needs to be that way. Uh, other ways it will not be the same color and uh, we uh, we were proud of that but uh, again it it's not for everybody I just want immediately to say it will be expensive and please don't jump and you know buy and then be like investigate we will show everything we will show again stop step by step how we made that color and uh, we will show you swatches it's uh, it's already yes and then a lot of people are asking about uh, lead tin yellow light. Uh -huh. When is it be in stock? Probably next month, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. It's um, again, don't be uh, alarmed about this. This is just uh, the problem with, um, with shipping. It's, um, it, uh, but uh, because we do buy this in small company, in Europe and so it's just shipping and uh, it's coming and as soon as it will be we are not changing the price on that one it's absolutely will be yeah probably end of the the no not end of the November but somewhere in the middle uh, asking about uh, in the EU uh, cadmiums they're they're taught they're not necessarily talking about banning uh, cadmiums but they they have re they have reclassified it as a car uh, one excuse me a, a class one B carcinogen, uh, which of course makes it unusable in many consumer products. But um, uh, so far, uh, the supply is still still steady. Although one one of the manufacturers this year stopped making it. That's why, again, this is what I was talking about. So we. We were surprised because we thought here in uh, United States, cadmiums will be, you know, it's still there. It's just lesser and lesser uh, companies are doing that. Okay, I think that's that's about that's, it. That's it. Wrap Great. it up. So we are happy you you were with us today, and uh, I. I encourage you to check our uh, painting best practices website and uh, see what we uh, we can give you. I truly believe that education is very important, uh, not only for young people but um, for all of us. Thank you very much. See you next um, uh, month. Uh, next month, we'll, we will uh, have this uh, AMA show specifically for unusual gifts and unusual products uh, on um, uh, in our website uh, for holidays or maybe just for your soul. So it will be very unusual uh, AMA uh, session. So I hope you to see you uh, next month. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.